our old meeting to order at 5.34 p.m. On. on Tuesday, the 23rd. 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 I'm in a minute here. I'm tired. I'm going to look at the calendar. <laughs> Minutes. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ms. Curls, evening. All right, so we'll get going with the schedule update. That's this sheet here. You've seen it before. Um, so last week, we got the vote from the planning board through the uh, site plan approval process. So we kind of got our blessing in terms of local permitting to move ahead with the bidding phase. We'll, we'll have a vote um, tonight with you guys that uh, formally approve the, the project team to go into the bid phase um, once we present everything to you. But um, for a look ahead here, the idea is we um, are going to be submitting the drawings and specs to bid docs online. So they're the company that's going to host the drawings and specs for the bidders. We'll get those to them uh, by end of business tomorrow. So they'll have the end of this week to review them. Schedule. Schedule. Um, and the idea is this upcoming Monday, the 29th, is when the drawings and specs are live and available for bidders to, to grab. And, review and all that. The plan is to have the pre-bid walkthrough next Thursday, May 2nd. So what that is, we'll, we'll be in this room, it'll be at 10 a.m. And any uh, GCs or subs that want to um, come to the meeting, we'll just kind of give them a big picture overview of what the project is, what the, um, the GC and filed sub-bid dates are, um, any questions they might have, we'll answer at that point, and then we'll go from here to the project site, and uh, if they have any specific questions on site, we can address them there. So the bid documents will go out? Monday the 29th. 29th, and they have to be submitted by? So we got, if you look at um, row f uh, item five within the bid yeah. phase, yeah. so filed sub bid date, so the filed sub bidders always go before the GC, that's May 21st, mm -hmm. and then a couple weeks later will be the GC bid on June 6th. So the idea is we next meet June 11th as a building committee. It'll be at that meeting where I'll present to you guys the, the GC bid, and we have the vote at that meeting to, to move ahead with ideally the low bidder. And Joyce, I'm going to send an email to you and David if we could set up a select board meeting on June 12th as opposed to the first uh, Wednesday in June. And similar to the senior center project, that would email you, um, you know, a notice of intent or, or a recommendation letter that you could present at that select board meeting. And vote on. There's a very low, low chance that we would need a meeting to show that we need to file some issue. We have a select board scheduled already for the 12th. Perfect. So, so what we'll do is the 11th, we'll do the committee vote. The next day, I'll put together a recommendation letter. I'll send it to you and David and Joyce, and um, <coughs> we'll vote on it at that meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, after the foul sub bids, if there's an action taken, such as rejecting a bid or some other issue, would that be a decision in front of this committee? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can you say that one more time? So between the 21st and the 24th, when we receive the file sub bids, mm -hmm. and we give the GC the instructions on any, any new information, about the file subs and the file sub tab calculation. Mm -hmm. If there's an issue with bid document submissions or qualifications or something like that, then we may have to reject a bidder, a okay. file sub bidder. Yep. Um, sometimes we do it without the committee's Yeah, we'll play that approval. by ear. Okay. Sometimes we take it back if it's convenient. But yeah. There may be an opportunity or a necessity for a meeting 
between the 21st and 24th. It's just a little probability. Yeah. Um, so the idea is on the select board meets on the 12th, you approve that recommendation letter, and then it's within that next week to two weeks where the contract gets finalized. Um, but what I'll do is the next day after that select board meeting, once I get you know the, the approval from the vote, I'll send a notice of intent letter to the low GC so they can get going. Um, and yeah, so and that's when construction gets going. <coughs> so we were so it's going to be we're trying to phase them so senior center library so thought <coughs> we weren't going until after the start of the um, right so library. unfortunately the library backed up because this is okay. when we were right. originally we, we were going to okay. be safe with this timeline and now okay we ain't so safe um it's not a library has to wait we're going forward Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is the library out now? Or that's I think some of it went out. Somebody said that part of it was going out or went out. Was it it's it's the the so. Maybe they sent it to, to be reviewed. Or Bottom line is um, we're going to make phone calls. We'll, we'll get GCs to bed on this. All right, because I just want to have it coordinated with Linda, the accountant. Yeah. Uh, so I spoke with her today. Okay. About so about borrowing and whatnot. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. important to have make sure that that's. Yeah on the same timeline for the borrowing yeah okay. and she has the correct schedule right now okay yeah um if we if we push stuff off i'll talk to her but mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean i okay. agree it's it's unfortunate that we made a pretty solid plan and uh, what happened sorry right. so roll with it. as long yeah. as as long as she's aware because she's got yep. the money no she's got the right thing yeah. Okay. It may actually be attractive to bidders to, to be able to bid two point. jobs in one town. Yeah. If they bid them, then they got some See savings the, there. Yeah, like the big concern we kind of had with the uh, senior center and library jobs going at the same time is those aren't, like for a GC that's going to go after this job or the senior center, the senior center and library jobs aren't super small to them. That, you know, so to make two of those at once, it's, you know, that's pretty tight. But if, if you know, if they got a library in the, the smaller fire substation, that be super appealing to them. So I, I think we should be okay. Um, any other questions on the schedule? <coughs> if not, we'll move ahead to budget update. So what I printed out is this estimate analysis. So this is the estimate analysis from the 80% CD um, estimate we had. And the reason why I wanted to print this out was just to go over, uh, or just to catch people back up to speed of where we were at because it's been a while since we jumped into the planning board process. So, so your Joe, was it? Three. Were you made aware of um, the only change we made? I don't know if Joe was aware of the drainage, of that dra the swell, swell. Swell okay. or whatever? Yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, when we get into the docs. Okay. Um, so if you get, go to page two, bottom of page two, I have one number that's squared up in green and then the other one in red. So that number in red was the reconciled estimate we had after the CD estimate. And that number in green is our construction budget. So you can see our estimate came in a little bit under budget. But we talked about um, setting up a couple of deduct alternates uh, just to kind of, for a safety factor, going in the bid to make sure we had something available if, you know, we went in over budget with the bids. Mm -hmm. So the plan is deduct alt one will be to remove the washer extractor, dryer, range, and refrigerator from the base bid scope and move that to the FF&E budget. And then deduct alt two will be to um, change the metal roof to an asphalt shingle roof. Again. Well, when did that? We're just going back to what we had previously before we had to deal with this <coughs> ground stuff. We okay, so when, when, okay, we don't. Right, so so even if these bids come in over budget, we don't have to take any of these. Okay. It's just it's just an option for the owner to use. If, if you don't have these options, you don't have anything. And then you pull it straight from contingency. <clears throat> right, but there'll be a separate meeting if something. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, I yes. just wanted to, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. None Thank of you. us like the idea of, Yep. 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 Okay. Thank you. So, and then the next portion of this text that I had in the red box here, 
Mm -hmm. So the senior center bids, so just pe so people know. So on page three here is the GC bid tab from the senior center project. If you look at, so we had 10 GCs bid the project, approximately seven of them were all at 500 bucks a square foot or less. That, that includes building and site. Mm -hmm. For the fire substation project, we currently have a budget of approximately $530 a square foot for building and site. So, so I'd like to think we're going to get a, a bid that's under budget. I wanted to highlight that, one. But two, I also, part of this topic is I want to bring up the um, data scope. So at one of the committee meetings, we talked about the data wiring, data jacks, and head-end equipment will make that part of the furniture budget. But right now, we have the telephone scope in the GC budget, in the GC scope. I don't want to do it that way. I don't, I don't think it's a, a smooth way to do it. Um, and I think we should have the data scope of work under the GC's umbrella. The electricians, and this is similar to what we did in the senior center job, will bid their electrical scope, their, their voice, and their data scope. All right, so we're going to have the one electrician. He's going to be dealing with the electrical. He's going to be dealing with the phones. If he wants to sub out the phone work, he'll sub it out. If he has in-house guys, he'll do it in-house. And he'll, at the same time, do the data wiring, data jacks and had an equipment. Um, in this estimate, we don't have that estimated. So let's say it's 30 grand, that data scope work, plus or minus. I don't have a budget concern putting that into the GC scope of work. Um, so I want to have a committee vote to do that. And if you guys are OK with doing it, we'll, John and I will coordinate on the appropriate specs and, and draw on changes. And we'll get that in the bid doc. So you're looking for a motion to approve moving thirty thousand. Well, don't don't minutes? put that value. Put <laughs> moving the 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 data scope <coughs> work out of the technology budget and in the into the construction budget. Yes. Yeah, and the phones aren't in budget yet either. It wasn't asked to. So we add the phones in there. So. Motion to approve moving data scope data and phones to the out of tech and into GC budget. Perfect. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion approved. <coughs> so, Mike, um, in the interim, I'm going to get John the data specs that we use for the senior center job, but I might want to set up a call with me, you, in Northeast IT, yeah, versus Northeast IT, yes. to just make sure we got. I know you had something a question about the number of phones. I just I yeah. have a chance to get back to phone lines and phones. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? So <coughs> right now we're showing seven handsets. I think it's too many. Yeah. I thought you were going to say. Okay, we'll go with it. I don't. The, <laughs> I'll, I, the only thing I reason why I didn't get back to you is I need to figure out. Remember how we're trying to eliminate. We, we have the option of possibly doing a wireless box for the fire alarm side, so we wouldn't need two hardwired phones. And then on top of that, we're... I saw that as an option under that. Uh, yeah. You get some uh, some uh, digital modules, and you can do Correct. that wirelessly. Yes. And it's still supervised by yes. MCA. And the backup, the, so the primary is still your hard line, and the backup mm -hmm. is the wireless. Oh. And so should we some. alter the bid docs? Yeah, I was just trying to figure because I, the only reason why I held off too is the dispatch area. I'm trying to figure if we should have, but you can do multiple if you have. It changes the equipment spec. So yeah. Right. So when you say the number of phones, that's the question. The device, you just have the device. Just, just the device. Plug in. Literally handsets. Oh, well, well, handsets. Yeah, just yeah. five, uh, three, 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 three for now. There's, a, one there's the two wall phones. One there's the one in the office. Three. Uh, I put two in the dispatch in case there's two people yeah. there, so that's five. So I'll say five. Five, five and then I had one. Oh, let's see where I didn't know. Do you have any other bumpers? No. No, I don't think so. But are you talking just handsets or, or five separate lines? No, no just no. handsets. handsets. Okay. No. Yeah. no. So five handsets, reasonable? I would say, yeah. I would say, yeah. Okay. Um, that, that reminded me, was there a part of some spec where we were saying they, they're tied into, oh no, that's the senior center job, and what you're doing at your fire state, public safety? 
right. we wanted to keep the we wanted to keep the spec the same right now, but the hope is that we can eliminate monitoring yeah. by putting the equipment into the station line. here to line monitor line. here. Right. Okay. So we wouldn't be going through a central station anymore. Right, that's what it was. Okay. But that's just one piece of equipment that yeah. we put into our dispatch center. It's not yeah. in okay. our space. So. Um, okay, great. So, um, so yeah, no, I mean, I, I like to think we're going to get, so as you saw, Senior Center Top had 10 GCs bid it. Um, that was awesome to see. I like to think we're not going to be all that far off in terms of the quantity of um, GCs bidding this job, and then you know the GCs attack the senior center job. I'm hoping for the same. Seems like the market's there. Um, so yes, we'll see. So if there are not any questions on the budget update, um, we'll get into. Well, you know what, let me skip over these next two items and let me do commissioning because it'll be quicker than I'll hear over you guys from. So, I got a, a Collier's commissioning proposal here. So Collier's, the company I work for, we, we have a division that does um, mechanical, electrical and plumbing commissioning. Um, so what that is, you would have a commissioning agent who would have commissioning specs and project specs for HVAC, electrical and plumbing. And during install, during the rough-in phase, a commissioning agent would come to the site and do their rough-in inspections. And this would be above and beyond what John's engineers would be doing. And then they would be involved with the startup of the equipment, and they would run through perform uh, the factory startup and, and performance um, startups for each unit. Um, and it's something, one, that we would recommend, and two, we already have a line item in the budget for commissioning. So let me just kind of break down to you the fee involved with this. So if you go to page, go to, go to, page, go to the back of the page three here. So see that $10,000? That is um, <coughs> the fixed amount in this proposal. And on the prior page, that's broken down by hour. And the different scopes of work the commissioning agent would be performed with that $10,000. Now, there's a limited amount of contra uh, construction meetings in this breakdown. So what they did was, on the back to the, this back side, where this section they call add alternates, they just kind of put together line items that would be not to exceed stuff. So, you know, another five meetings, not to exceed another five meetings. Okay, so the back page. Cat alternates. So essentially, A, B, C, D, and E within those add alternates are would just be a time and material thing. So if we were to go ahead with this commissioning services, it would be set up such that I would call a tactic commissioning agent. Listen, the generator start is going to be next week on Thursday. We want you to get to that start. <coughs> Phil, are these guys, are, are we doing this on the senior center yes. project? We yeah. <coughs> Yeah, so we're doing this on the senior center. Can project. I just, so what exactly is this besides $10,000 of expenses? You've got yep. brand new equipment going in. Yep. You've got building inspectors, other people watching this job. Yep. So this so, is somebody just coming over to watch something? No, gets to, no. That just, so please explain to me yeah, a yeah. little bit because <laughs> sure, sure. I'm having a hard time with this. Understood, yeah. So uh, rough in inspection wise, um, a lot of times the commissioning agents, you know, probably going to go above and beyond an inspection that say, mechanical engineer is going to do, electrical engineer, plumbing engineer is going to do during their construction site visits. So that's during the rough and install. So essentially inspecting that. The same thing Tim Nyhart's going to do? No. 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 Joe, no. Joe, it's kind of like this stuff right here. If you kind of read these a little bit, it kind of gives a little more detail. Fire up the diesel generator, they're going to put it under full load. So it's somebody who has the experience to be able to, yeah. to go through. Well, and this, yeah, it's essentially all they do. One, but two, so Tim Nyhart's not going to be present for the startup. So it's no different than you buying a brand new car, okay, and it fails in 30 days. Where are you going to go with it? Back to the dealer, correct? Hopefully. So instead of spending 50000 the car you just spent sixty. it's a waste of money. I mean, somebody should be behind some of this. It's a brand new project. Yeah, this, should is, be flawless. this is kind of a double uh, check that, on their So work. flawless doesn't exist. No. Uh, I don't know what. Well, uh, okay. No, flawless doesn't exist. So. I, uh, okay. Uh, so it's better to do the test 
the full load test, and if you're going to blow a circuit board, or you're going to blow something else up. It's on them, not on us. Right, and, and, and bottom it's line a is, a project. I don't think you're doing the testing, you're just witnessing right. testing, right? Well, yeah, the, the contract and the manufacturer's rep do stop right. the start. Yeah, just making sure everybody's going by the, by the numbers. Yeah. Exactly. So it's it's another $10,000 that you would like us to approve to have somebody just oversee? Listen, by all means, don't approve it. Oh, I'm, that's, I'm trying to get the, the scope of it where I feel comfortable sure, spending another sure. $10,000. and I. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, we already had the ten thousand dollars in the budget. It doesn't matter. Why do why do we always have to spend all the money in this town that's budgeted? Why can't we once in a while say, "Man, so, we did a project a little bit under budget. We're proud of ourselves." Okay, so if they did all this, and it went backwards, or something went wrong, we could send them to you. But if you know, we didn't wait spend it. We didn't it's do brand it. new. Wait, 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 hear me out. That something died on that project and. It's, it's not covered. A, if you go back, this to is what I don't get about this, this town of Hadley. I don't get if it. You, if you go back to this project here, this, like, this building, yeah, we should have had and, one here. And all of the things that had happened here after the fact, this is why this is important to have this in place. Because if this person had been in, we wouldn't mm -hmm. be in the mess that we've been in over the last 20 years. So this, this, this is like an insurance binder, Correct. which we probably already have or stuff like this, but it's just a second insurance binder. The, the issue is. These, so the, the subcontractors that we're talking about that are responsible for these different systems, okay. the radiance lab heating, yep. the boiler install, the startup of that boiler, the pumps, the generator, you're never going to get the true customer service you should get out of them. Why, why? I couldn't tell you why. It's just they, that's, that's how these guys do business. And that's kind of why the commissioning services exist, honestly. And, and the, the biggest, you know, uh, Thing you're going to get from this scope is exactly that. So when you have this radiance lab startup, this commissioning is just going to track all the deficiencies and flaws that happened during that startup. And during so that if the startup goes flawlessly and the commissioning person witnesses it, yeah, right. And 30 days later, 28 days later, we have a problem. Yeah. Who can we point a finger? I'm just curious. Who who do we? Well, you're going to first the go commissioning to, person. You, well, you're going to first go to the contractor. They own that install. They own right. that system. But you just but said they're not going to do anything about it. If we don't have, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, the contractor well, does respond when there's warranty issues. They're required to. Okay. So they will, but having the commissioning agent there basically to um, shadow him during every step, make sure he does every test, make, you know, stand next to him, make sure he does every single thing that the manufacturer wants to have done on that piece of equipment. And you can't guarantee that unless you're basically in his lap. So this person is in the contractor's lap during all of those various startups and tests. Okay. Okay. So what kind of verification does the, the this person have that they actually went through every one of those steps? Who shadows that person? Are we going to just keep shadowing a shadow? Well, they're going to give you a checklist. I mean, that's what I'm saying. The Where does the money stop? They're going to give you a checklist. The commissioning agent produces the... And this is something Tim Nyer can't do, Mike, you can't do, like nobody can witness. You've got so. too many different yeah. things here. But just uh, an example for our scope of work. So, for example, a sprinkler system or even more current, the FM200 <laughs> suppression system that's yep. going into the battery storage thing over at UMass. There's the company that installs it, yep. okay? So brand new equipment, it's installed, but there's a commissioning agent that's coming out for the university and for us on our behalf to actually go through every single piece and part of it and make sure that everything's interconnected and go through the testing with us to make sure that it's operating per spec, per, per manufacturer's warranty. So if the, if the if you go to a generator scenario, if the generator breaks because it's brand new and there's something wrong with it as part of, part of it's being built, Correct. then yeah, that's a warranty <coughs> thing. That's okay. the contractor. Okay. But the contractor puts all this work into it and misses something along the way, not just, you know, human beings make mistakes. It's the second set of eyes that's hopefully going to is going to find that. Catch something that's that missed or something that's done wrong. So that you're not then being second with something else. And that is above and beyond like what a building inspector would do. So right. We're not. We. This, yeah, we this, and yeah. so Collier's. Have we got a couple estimates? I'm just asking. We I'm have, always the guy that just we asks have, the craziest questions. Yep. So it's ten thousand dollars to your firm or yep. your sub firm. Have we checked to see if this is seventy five hundred somewhere else or fifteen thousand? We have just not. a question. No. Okay. Thank you. We can certainly do that. I'm just asking why. Yep. 
Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like to, would you like to put that in the form of a motion that this goes out to bid? I would. I would like to make a motion okay. to have this um, go out to bid to see if we can get some other estimates. Well, you don't have to bid it, you just have to request a second. Solicit. Yeah, it two at least. I know what they say. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 So, okay, caveat to that is, and if you read into this a little bit further, the commissioning agent, once they're on board, and usually they're on board before now, we don't know their job, they would be advising us on putting a specification in this book called commissioning that would advise each contractor, mechanical contractor, electric contractor, fire protection contractor, plumber, that I'm the commissioning agent, I'm going to be here, I'm going to expect you to sit with me four hours to do this, ten hours to do this, expect me to do this, this, and this, you will be here and help me with this information, you will, oops, you will start it up when I ask you to, you'll do all these things, because if we kind of tell a contractor that we have this commissioning agent coming in after he's did the job, and he sees, well, that takes more time because I've got to do more things, that's a change order coming your way. So it would be nice to get the commissioning agent online before, a week before the file a bid date. Yeah. Uh, honestly, honestly right what now, you're saying right now, there is nobody in this book as of right now, though. Right. So that, that that's affirmative as of right now. There is nobody in here. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. that's okay. So we're not in the book yet. Nobody is. So May 14th. So go ahead, I'm listening up. So about May 14th is the last opportunity to put a addendum in there for the subbidders. So May 14th would be the and end. Then, yeah, and then at least the whoever you choose as your commission agent will have to write a spec and give it to us before May 14th. Either or, your company or a generic up. somebody else. Right. I'm just asking. No, no, fair question. So to be honest, so I'm just trying to make sure goes yep. smoothly. Yeah, this should happen ASAP. Mm -hmm. yep. So, so I, whether your company does it and we approve it or correct, we, we get you know. So, what I mean? so Collier's um, performed the commissioning side of Collier's performed MEP design reviews every step of design on this project, um, and similar to what we did in the senior center job, we at this time frame of the senior center job mm -hmm. is when we kind of introduced the scope. It was in the budget. We, they have a background and knowledge of the project. Here you go, architect, here's the commissioning spec. We got the approval for to move forward and off we went. Um, we didn't have this hiccup where we have to seek out different pricing. Um, the only reason why I'm at bringing this up, it seems like there's always a few caveat things that are like never brought up till almost like, you know, like you just explained. Well, this might jeopardize, you know what I'm saying, the booklet and the deadlines. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like I wish I knew about this a while ago. And maybe it was out there. I, I just didn't know. Yeah. That's all I'm asking you. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I'm always proactive on trying to save my community money. Right. I don't care about a budget. I don't care if it's a million dollars. Right. Why do we always well, have so to spend it? it? I'm just way. trying to be proactive. Right, right, right. So let me put it this way. So let's say with this proposal, it's 10000 guaranteed, and say within the ad all you spend another... Six thousand, so a total of sixteen thousand. Like right now, I have sixteen thousand okay. in the budget. So say you spend all of that, and let's say we spend two weeks uh, seeking out alternative pricing, and say we get twelve thousand. So we say four thousand dollars on a um, a budget of whatever it is. It's just th this is the appropriate scope to perform in this publicly funded project, okay. um, and it seems like we're having a back and forth over a few thousand dollars. Um, I, I just and well, I, I, I want people to understand that this um, the re we're bringing this up because it's a it's a big deal commissioning uh, is a big deal with MEP systems it's the heartbeat of a building and, and nowadays um, it's just to have that second set of eyes that are 100 percent going to do a lot more than a building inspector 100 percent going to do a lot more right. than an HVAC engineer. It, well, we and we had talked about it at the select board meeting of even hiring a separate uh, course of the works. Uh, no, right, and right. they had gone into doing that, which would have uh, cost even more to do that, not realizing that's your job. Right. You're the clerk of the work. Yep. You were hired to do this <coughs> job, so yep. why would we want to hire another? Well, I've got another question. If we do hire somebody else, yep. how does that affect this? Oh, it wouldn't. I mean, oh, I mean you, the you, chain of command or? Well, they would be, you know, they they would be a if we have a problem with some of this we go back to them and the contractor that did it, it would, instead of you it and would the be my responsibility to manage that commission agent okay yeah so yeah it wouldn't be 
So can I just, for the minutes here, so we have a request from Joe Boys for <coughs> that a formal, would we call it a request for proposal? Is that yeah. what it's called? Yeah, solicitation, solicitation of, of proposals. Solicitation of proposals, yeah. Because you're going to need to, sorry. We sent out to ensure competitive price. Is that correct? It's been a seconded by. Do we have a vote? Is there a second? Did you, you second you or you, did you not second? I did not second. I thought he did. He did not second. If everybody at this committee feels that this is appropriate and fine coming from the same design firm, then vote on it. I'm just questioning. It's not coming from the design firm. It's coming from the over OPM owner's project manager. So the design firm has okay. their design. Okay. The o the only reason why I like I said we for so for example for Lowe's, the town actually put in the scope of the project manager or what whoever Lowe's had doing the whole project. They were required by fire and the building department to bring in their own third-party engineer to review for the town. So kind of the same thing as this, where we have somebody, because Tim and I, first of all, we can't design systems, but second of all, I'm not an engineer of sprinklers, so that's why the engineer comes in and does, goes through, signs off on it and everything. Um, We're doing that for the planning board, just so people know. Right, so that's that's the only reason why I would be comfortable, plus it's under the, you know, I know it's Collier's, but, you know, we did, when we hired Collier's as our OPM, it was a pretty, a pretty substantial process for bringing them on board as it was. But I, I understand what you're saying. Same as it was. A My personal opinion is I wanted to question it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. ask questions. That's your if job. this board feels comfortable, I'm one out of the board. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just want to question it. I feel comfortable. I do understand your point of all of a sudden now this comes up as a, it's like, oh, hey, by the way. Correct. You know, yeah, but I. I yep. So, like I said, if the board feels comfortable, I'm just one out of the board questioning something, that's all. That's your prerogative, Joe. That's why you're on the board. Well, but there was money in this project for somebody to do this. Yes. Okay. So it wasn't like all of a sudden. Personally, I would, personally, I, no, personally, I would I personally, I would prefer that this be in place than the select board wanting to hire another clerk of the work, because that would have cost us a lot more okay. money. Who, which they wouldn't be up in speed on what the project is doing. Correct. Uh, it would be in the same boat as we came into when the school right. in this building was placed with the town clerk of the works we had then. It was a disaster. So. Okay. Um, I mean, you're you're also introducing <coughs> another party that's not involved with the project now. That's going to be, you know, they. So well, is everybody clear on this? Yeah. So. Um, so would you like me to withdraw my motion? Now that I understand fully, it's totally up to you. It's up to you. your prerogative. So I guess at this point, I would like to withdraw asking for a second bid on somebody to oversee the the uh, commissioning. commissioning of the substation. Don't. Second Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Correct. Okay. We'll be right along. What's next? So we need a motion yeah. now. Okay. I'll make a no. motion to accept the commission bid. Uh, so it's a it's a not your service. Yeah. Second. Hold on. Is there anything we need to add it to them? No, it's fine. I'll, I'll okay. submit this to the So is there a max amount? Yeah. So not to exceed twenty eight thousand three sixty one. Just so people know, I don't I don't anticipate it exceeding the sixteen thousand dollars I have in the budget. But that just goes. And the twenty eight thousand is in the budget also, or is it sixteen thousand? We have sixteen thousand dollars in the budget. The way this proposal is written up is that add alternate section. These are all not to exceed amounts. So I'm not going to use all of this. I don't anticipate we're going to use sixteen thousand. But the way this proposal is written up, the max amount is that ten thousand plus the eighteen thousand three sixty one. We're not going to be calling them. <laughs> We're not going to exceed it. Right. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you got that in the motion? So not, not to exceed, exceed 28,000, what was it? 361. It'll be, it'll be interesting. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Who's the second? All opposed? Aye. I oppose. Aye. Aye. I'll, I oppose. Okay. I made the motion. You the motion. Did you second it, Gary? Yes. Next. Uh, so site plan approval update. Um, again, we got the vote from the planning board last week of conditional approval. I still haven't gotten the formal document from them, so we're going to get that. Uh, but they, you know, they read off what the guidelines are for the approval. So part of that process, like we were saying, um, they allowed us to do the above ground stormwater system but they would like to, us to add a dry well in the center of the, ba the main basin we have on the site. In the center of the main basin. Right? In, the, in the basin. So part of our requirements to kind of move along with this site plan approval is to get the planning board an updated set. Mm -hmm. So the updated set will have, will have that dry well in it. Another part of the process was we now do not have an underground system as an adult one. That's how select board voted. To. So, like we have said, we have the deep adults. Um, and yeah, that's what, and we're going with the, the entry layout that we had kind of previously approved as a committee where a truck could potentially enter at the intersection, pull it back up without right. doing it on room yeah. drive. Up yeah. to the sidewalk. So, you need to get a new plan that's reflecting what the Drive it's, well, the it's, already it's already here. It's already here. It's designed okay. in the Alright, so we can send it. So I need to plan the plan. Yeah, I have to send the drawings to the electronic bidding firm tomorrow. Okay. And they'll set it up and it'll be ready on Monday. For all intents and purposes, these are. And it was really kind of ironic that uh, John Wash. Uh, Said, I was thinking that why they didn't do that, and I said, Well, why didn't you mention it before now? <laughs> because of the sandy soil up there, mm -hmm. that a dry well <coughs> yeah. thing would well, fit nicely in that area and take care of what we did. Oh. Huh? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're all yeah. Yeah. So Mark waited to say that until he saw that you know there was an impasse and yeah. people were going to get it, then he dropped that out there as an option. So, Next. so it has to go to it has to go to that engineer. The, the so What's it called? The third party engineer. Third party engineer. Is that where it's going next? Mm -hmm. No, for planning. No, so, so, so just to organize. So, we have to get the planning board an updated just yes. site plan approval set. We're not yes. setting this full bid set. Right. Just the, um, so we're going to do that in the next week or so. The idea is I'm waiting to get the formal document from Bill Dwyer that spells out everything because I want to read through that, send something to John and Carlos to spell out what exactly I have to get them. But mm -hmm. part of that will be an updated set. John, seven, seven to ten ups, eleven ups, eleven. <laughs> John was just talking about how for the bid docs, they're going to be live on Monday. We're going to get the, the company that's hosting the, the drawings tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They're going to spend the end of this week to review. Go live on Monday. Um, what I had said earlier when you brought up third party engineers, so, and I know we're going to get the same regulations that we got for the senior center job. A regulation that the planning board puts on the project is they want a third party engineer to review the install and provide a certificate of compliance at the end of construction or a CFO will not be issued at the end of the project. So I have um, started to coordinate with Mark Donald from Berkshire for the senior center job because they were the peer review engineer for the senior center job. So the idea would be he would be for the senior center job that third party engineer um, so I have to, between me, him, and the planning board, she are determine if, when they state that in the regs, does that mean I got to have them during the actual install or, or just, so I, I, bottom line is this project's going to have that too. So what we'll do is we're going to, I'm going to call up the peer review engineer that was the peer review on this project and they'll satisfy that requirement once we get to that. That's to review all site plan? Work? That's to, to, to the construction, the install. Ball. Yes. Install with everything or just the stormwater? Uh, it's stormwater, I'm assuming, but that's an assumption. I have to I have to get clarification. Do we should we be adding in a site survey we, from the so general what contractor? Have him resurvey the site when he's done? Oh I, well he's he's got all the controls, yeah. No, he, he does that, but normally normally you get an ASPO, which is yes, a ASPO. 
yeah. but the next step up is to actually have him go out there with his own surveyor. Survey. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this document that we're going to get from Bill Dwyer, that'll be part of the bid set so bidders can understand the requirements of the planning board to have on the project. You haven't found it. All right, um, Carlos or John, you guys want to get into the bid docs? I'll, I'll start very quickly. Uh, so, according to the following procedures, uh, we've had several iterations, preliminary design development, 65%, 80%, and 100%, and now we have bid documents already. Uh, so, uh, what we require to go forward is your approval that these things are appropriate and adequate. I will spend all night reviewing your page with you, but to, to what extent does not matter. Uh, generally speaking, this is the specification um, which identifies the materials, how the materials are installed. This is basically how you build the building. This is what you're building, so to speak, for anybody who doesn't normally work with drawings and specifications. Um, I'll let Carlos explain the site. That's a real page turner. So, um, basically, we'll be reviewing this with the building inspector. But this is the first page of the code review sheet. It's a very simple building of, of very simple construction. Uh, it's all no, no issues intended. Describes the occupancy of the building, where there's fire ratings. The only fire ratings we have, we have a half hour around the two bunk rooms because they're kind of residential within the code of fires. Even a sprinkler building, which was a one, change. One quick question. Mm -hmm. This is uh, a quick proof on that other good stuff. Because I was you can't it's say proof because the big one. Well, it doesn't meet earthquake standards. It was just a okay, yes. uh, it was an earthquake seismic, yes. seismically designed. Stuff starts jumping around and hope it's not put by. Now, are you, slave labor. Yeah, depending upon what is considered the momentum of the earthquake, uh, this will resist up to what is the code required. Okay, because I was in that San Francisco earthquake. Uh, okay. So all the code information, this is important. And, uh, is that, the, uh, okay. So is that, is that our phase one of the building documents then? That page? Phase one. Like the narrative? Yeah, this kind of explains the, the codes that are being used, um, how we got to this building size, proving that this building is the right construction based upon the size and type of use. The type of use is here, all that's here. The fire rings for all the different various, you know, uh, firewalls, interior bearing walls, uh, roof framing, uh, any, anything that might require a fire rating is described here. Turns out we only need them at the, at the bunk spaces. Uh, interior finishes, it's a commercial building. You don't want it to go up like the back car. Uh, means of ingress requirements. We've got, we got plenty of doors. Very, very simple, not a difficult project as far as mm -hmm. Building inspector. May find something, but reasonably not. Site survey that we will eventually provide the contractor also a digital copy of this so you can get his numbers out there. Um, Demo plan showing erosion control, extensive all the work, uh, track pads to come in, and several um, uh, temporary basins basically to divert some of the water around while the construction is being done, so to control the water in site and not be contaminating our actual drainage system at the end. So, um, and there's a sequence of how the con overflow. Yes, that will be the connection to overflow. That's this is the connection to sewer. That's right. So we want to make sure that any topsoil or anything <laughs> taken off doesn't leave Hadley? Yeah, yeah we, we have it on the notes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what about the material from the senior centers? They brought that up. They're That's going to BPW. BPW. So they trucked it out and they're bringing it back? What's been off-site is off-site. The remainder of that massive pile that's not being used at the senior center project is going to DPW. Where did the earlier stuff go? I have no clue. Fair enough. We do, <coughs> we do state that anything in this project that's excess that is within what 18 inches or whatever mm -hmm. it is of the finish grade will stay on site and be used for our burns. Yeah, burns. Anything below that that's in excess will be delivered by this contractor to a location in town determined by DPW. Uh, yeah, 
Um, this is our drainage plan, and the only difference that you see here is that, of course, we don't have the alternate two for this underground system, and we've added uh, a leaching basin basically uh, at the center there, and it's almost a, it's a second failsafe, you know, for the... Uh, so the leaching basin is going... Yeah, we, so the whole argument was about, for, you know, if it was frozen uh, conditions, um, the design as it was, it met every requirement and everything else. But as an extra failsafe, what they've done is basically if this ever gets totally frozen Correct. and you have also a rain event happening yep. at the same time, this basin becomes a basically a hole that goes from the zero to those four feet underneath, so that doesn't never get really frozen in there. Like you look at this mm -hmm. catch basin outside yep. when you look into it. The idea is that again, if you have those two conditions, there is a, a relief point where the water there's you know that should be uh, not frozen, and then that water will eventually either drip slowly if it's snow, but if it's just uh, ice, then it would it should be going there. Once it hits that under four feet, then it can drain. Correct. The problem is that those fir first couple of inches they were frozen. So that's above and beyond any mass. Any, yeah, this is, yeah, yeah. above and beyond. Um, above and suspenders. Yeah, and because those rain events, the truth is that they are extremely rare when you have mm -hmm. frozen and rain, but, and, and in that case, everything around you. And is I agree because that away. soil is really good for leaching. Yeah, you know yeah. For it to yeah. Fine. But, uh, but I think it was a good idea in the sense that it, that answers every single question in regards right. to any other <coughs> issue that could happen there. So, <coughs> so that's the only difference that you see from all the plants that you've seen up to now um, is that we've, instead of just having the basin, we have that then leaching basin inside of it. And we, we can show you in the details what that looks like. Okay. Um, there's a sign off front, two lights on it, similar to the sign mm -hmm. here, except it's not engraved, it's actually hard, hard letters. Uh, flagpole. Flagpole and the uh, hydrant. hydrant in the back. Uh, the two propane tanks, all you're going to see is the chimneys mm -hmm. coming out yep. of the ground. There's no particular planting around them and there's Nothing no else. stakes or anything, they're just out in the grass. Are they vaulted? Well, there's a chimney that comes out, it'll stick out of the ground about a foot and a half or so. What, what's the surrounding materials? Is it just buried in the sand? Uh, there's gravel, sand. and then above that, there's topsoil. Kind of so it's just pure sand. It's a request. Yeah. Yeah. Can I take erosion? Yes. Cathode. Um, Cathode. Yeah. 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 But, but you said nothing around the tank, so correct? Nothing around the tank. They're below the ground. Around. And all you have is a, a, a chimney stick now. Mm -hmm. And they're away from traffic. Nobody's going to drive away. Did you say you needed something? Or no. You need, you, all you need is the town bylaw says you have to have a okay, piece of white PVC. We, we can stock the shooter all the way down at the end of the barn. Yeah, yeah. Because we've had people I, actually drive over their caps. Yeah. yeah. Somebody that took the top what off the cap and <laughs> uh, <laughs> broke the tank. I think, yeah. So it's not a good yeah, signage yeah, and, 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 and <laughs> stakes. <laughs> we could definitely we'll take care of that. Um, Simba planting plan, you know, we provided some screening for the parking lot. Um, there, we also have some screening, again, for the parking lot as you're coming this way. Same on this side, we provided some screening from the neighbor. Um, we'll coordinate the spacing on this. I know she's concerned about her view, the view the and everything else. I have no issue with when we're doing the layout of the planting, we can go out there and we can, we can make it work. Yeah. It'll be in the same area, but just if she wants to see the... She's always looked at the, uh, the meadow. So have you the meadow. She yeah, I sent it, she sent me an email, I sent her an email saying, hey, I acknowledge I got your email. Now. We're, we're still coordinating everything. And, okay. and that's, I mean, again, I... I Normally the, uh, the landscape or landscape architect would be out here when they're, pointing the when they're laying it out. So we can look at it at that point and you know, make sure that they're... Did you explain that? The, yeah, this is this is our manhole, uh, manhole for sanitary manhole. Actually, our catch basin is on the, on the next one. This is what our beaching basin is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you got plenty of capacity. Uh, yeah, six feet by six feet. Um, that's totally empty, but not, it's not just this that's taking volume, it's all the stone that you have all around, around it, so around. it Correct. ends up yes. being almost 12 feet in, in diameter. Okay. You know? um, we've raised the, uh, so the top is raised so that we are not um, changing any of the way that the actual basin drains, because I don't, we don't want it to silt up. 
Yeah, correct. Exactly. So correct. we don't want it in when we don't have actually that event, and it's the sun middle of summer. We don't want all the water to go in going there. We really want the water to actually be infiltrated. Just go down. So this is only it'll it's, it would have to rise to go in. Yeah, we have it up at six inches, so it's about three inches below the the overflow. So okay. so okay. it's it's still plenty of time for don't it. Don't hit the the lawnmower. Yeah. We won't. Um, we're never going to mow it. <laughs> I can, uh, we don't have to now. It's got a leaching base. We can, we can burn it. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're going to leach back in. Burn it like spirit stuff. Yeah, it'll spur. Okay. So the... Uh, don't get me stirred now. I was just going to make a comment about the weeds around this place. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no. You bring it up, I answer it. You yeah. step there. <laughs> My son's been working really hard mowing here, so shut your mouth up. <laughs> uh, floor plan. Uh, the only recent change is basically we put in the metal stair as opposed to the wood, you know, that actually fit a little bit nicer. Uh, and uh, in order to get the duct work out to the uh, louvers and have the louvers line up with the windows, I had to take a little corner out of the uh, communications room, which was good size anyway, uh, just to get out that louver. Okay. So that was a minor change. Uh, everything else has remained the same. We have mezzanine up here. Uh, come in, we have uh, out the vestibule, I don't know if you've seen this many times. Yep. The, the meeting room, the day room, you get dispatch with a window off of uh, the vestibule. This is a, a solid window with a counter and a pass through underneath the window. Yep. Uh, you do have two push buttons here, so you can push button uh, with electric strikes. You can let somebody come in if they hit the doorbell and you, for some reason the outside door is locked. Then you can actually buzz them into here if you want to get them out of the lobby and into uh, the meeting space. And that's all by GC scope. That's all GC scope. Right. Got Strikes, access, control. You need from the plane. Yeah. We, do, we should be all set. Uh, uh, we have the two bunk spaces, an office space. Uh, there's two restrooms, uh, one with access off the uh, apparatus, one off an interior hallway. Uh, for code, we're calling them men and women. How you operate, it's up to you. Uh, Transcend. Each, each, each has a uh, shower. Well, they're single, yeah. they're single occupancy. So. Yeah. Yeah. Who's ever in there? That happens to be what they're for. That's and that's what you don't you don't designate them anymore. I well, guess that's the plumbing code it's has a requirement. Oh, do they now? <laughs> no, really? it's always been there. That's Still, the old requirement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If we, That'll change. If we had a third one, we could make unisex. Yeah. You cannot make the only ones in the building unisex because they're required to be men and women until wow. somebody changes. Somebody changes it. <laughs> you go into the hospital, the main corridor now. They have two bathrooms there, going down the main hallway. They're both unisex. And they're both unisex yeah. now. Mm -hmm. If you have bathrooms yeah. that are above and beyond the, the amount required by code, mm -hmm. you can do that. Mm -hmm. But since these two are required by code, yeah. you can't do that. Okay. Well, that don't make no difference to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a line in the, in the women's, I go to the men's anyway. So. Yeah, they just oh, pee outside. Now everybody anyway. knows. <laughs> 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 I'm going to pee in the drain as well. The woman will have a little icon of a woman. Oh, yeah. Can you take that out? Sleep in the room right now. Uh, in the uh, storage room, we've got the washer extractor. In order to save space, I pushed it up against the wall and put a large access panel, 32 by 48, in the back of it so that it doesn't take up as much space. And if you have to access or get to the rear of it, you can through the hallway. Uh, trying to save space everywhere we can. We have the turn up here um, dryer, and we have a workbench with a nice uh, make run underneath it. Uh, the mechanic room is full. Uh, we have lockers against the back wall uh, and three apparatus doors. This is either drive through or you can have three front line apparatus. Uh, wall types. Uh, one small thing that changed is uh, at the end of the job, the structural engineer uh, had us add some shear walls. Shear walls are designed with, they've got plywood behind the drywall, and what they're designed to do is provide a diaphragm for lateral loads. So that seismic design mm -hmm. is actually picked up by some of these walls actually having plywood and acting mm -hmm. as a level brace. Mm -hmm. uh, room finish schedule, uh, we'll tell you, you know, basically we have mostly uh, uh, LVT, which is the, the vinyl plank, the nicer mm -hmm. style of vinyl flooring. Uh, in most of the spaces, uh, we've got the uh, resinous floor in the uh, apparatus and in the uh, storage area here, so you've got the cove base, so water hits the ground, it's not going to damage your walls or anything. And everything drains to, to, to the floor drains. There's a chair rail in some of the spaces, mostly the public spaces, for a little bit of protection and a little bit of decoration. You can paint the walls two colors, it looks nice. Uh, we have the locker base that we talked about, so that 
the residence floor will come up uh, at the locker base too. So you would have complete water protection underneath that. For so the roofing, um, this hasn't changed for a couple of submissions now. It's, a, it's metal roofing with a cupola above. Uh, all the metal roof details, standard standing seam details. We do have aluminum gutters and downspouts on the building. There will be uh, lightning protection up here. I'm not sure. It's a pretty simple building. You might not have more than five or six uh, air lightning uh, terminals or arresters. Uh, Did we decide, I know I haven't been here at every meeting, is there any electricity in the cupola? Yeah, there's actually a light okay. in the cupola. And it's RGB, which means you can change it from oh, red, green, green yellow, blue. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> and there's room to put a disco ball. <laughs> hey, don't tell the neighbor that, Kyle. Big point. New Year's Eve. No, I will Kyle will probably come. We'll so, party. So we mentioned that there's an alternate. So we added in an alternate. We added in a deduct alternate, that makes sense, uh, for uh, asphalt shingles. So we need to come up with a set of details just for the asphalt shingle option. So this is showing you the same roofing details but with asphalt shingle instead of and that's for what is that a 40 year if we had to go it's a 40 year um so the is building, it cheaper than the metal oh yeah that's why we're doing it oh yeah. 100 100,000 mm -hmm. really yeah. wow i thought it would be the other way around to tell you the truth no no it doesn't it used last. to be used to be but it doesn't exactly yes yeah. yeah. no i'm, I'm glad mm. I'm, I'm happy with the metal well, yeah definitely Thank you. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is the sign you have out front. The change to this is it's actually on a, like a plastic PVC type board and actually the board material is more like you'd see for a toilet partition, you know, the plastic yeah. toilet partitions. You can't, it doesn't get wet, I mean it gets wet and you can't touch it. Basically it will out with everybody. Is there, is that sign going to be lit or not? It's lit from two signs, two lights on either side. It will be centered, correct? I'm just being a smart ass. It's it's totally not centered in this. The word had to. Yeah, it up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm just, I'm having one of those days. And that's, your good, good that's, your good and that's my good eye. <laughs> you know, it's because of Verizon, you're angry. It doesn't take much. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you can get down, down like this. No. Um, <laughs> right, um, yeah, if you want it centered, we can center it. It's up to you. This It'd was, be a, this was a simple suggestion. This was a little artistic, I guess. Put it through a lot. Uh, so, all right. But now these, these are applied yep. letters because okay. Mike didn't want to go through having to paint this all the time. Yep. So these would be yep. applied letters you want to paint. Okay. Uh, corner board trims, window types, uh, they're all double hung. Yep. Anderson basically. Yep. Yep. Um, these windows have a solid base that they're just meant to be upper windows because Mike wanted the storage below. So these are solid panels underneath. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. That yes. Um, and that's the north side right there, right? Facing. Yes, this is, yep. this is the upper end. Yep, yep. Uh, we have three types of siding, and the red ring uh, was we had the red clapboard, we have the darker gray, uh, I mean, the yep. red shape, the darker gray clapboard, and then we have a paneling up here with it's an embossed vertical. It's not flat, it's not like flat. It's not like a three quarter inch batten. I thought that'd be too much articulation up there. So it's a little bit smoother. It's embossed vertical paneling, and that's in a very light. Right. Bad words. Yeah. Cutters and downspouts. All the appliances. You know, we've got vents and disconnects on the back logs. This is the HVC. Just to add, all the gutters on uh, that are in uh, next to sidewalks or the entrance are they go uh, underground and they get piped out. Um, the ones on the north side, they're they're not because there's grass right next to it. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, building sections, uh, basically, here's the office area. This is the mezzanine above. You can see we picked up it struck very well as a, a beam. Um, and basically, it's, it's built by, you put a truss here, put, take this truss, you put it on top of this truss, and by creating three separate trusses, which you can get on the road, you don't have one big one, you can actually carve out that space for yourself. Uh, we did the uh, apparatus as a scissor truss, trying to just mm -hmm. get more volume up there. Um, the the, the uh, overhead doors are follow the roof design because you want to come up with this space and then have a horizontal door. Yeah. Just kind of waste it all. Yeah. So we kind of bring it up. Thanks. Uh, there's a 
A large fan? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> There's a company that yeah. Yeah. manufactures big ass fan. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's actually their company. That's their name. That's their name. It has Great. a company for a symbol. Yeah. Did yeah. 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 you use uh, venti exhaust? In the truck. Yeah, so uh, I'll show you the mechanical plates, but they are collected through an exhaust capture system that goes yeah. off the north wall. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also another system in the apparatus which is based upon a NO2 nitrous oxide, which is diesel fumes, and if that triggers, it will turn on a fan, an exhaust fan, and it will automatically open your doors, and it will exhaust that, that those fumes out, which are mm -hmm. dangerous. Uh, this happens to be a section that goes through, uh, goes through the section between the office area and the apparatus area. This is the, the mezzanine is a solid wall here, just for a dark wall. And because you don't want to see your mess up in the mezzanine all the time. Uh, we have better views of the kitchen. Uh, that's the metal stair coming up. There's a little bit of a uh, landing that sticks out of the uh, mezzanine, and this comes up and hits it. This way to see it. Is that wood up there, that landing, or is that like wire mesh, or is it the, when you're coming up the metal stairs? This is metal grade, yep. and then when and then you get up to here, you're coming up to uh, subfloor and underlayer. So you're coming up with painted wood up there. Okay, okay. I just asked. didn't decide to do anything other than paint it. Yep. Other than that. Okay. Uh, building sections, uh, basically two by six construction. You know, uh, we're using a zip wall, an uninsulated zip wall. There's lots of issues about that right now. But it's a wall that you've seen. It's a, I think it's the green board now. And it has the water resistant, the weather resistant barrier applied to the wood, yeah. and you just take the take seat. The seat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It goes very fast. Works very nice. Uh, at one point, we did have an insulated wall here, but what we've since found out is when you put use the insulated zip wall between the OSB board, which is, has a lot of resins in it, and you would laminate on the insulation, you create a vapor barrier. <laughs> and the company doesn't want to admit it, but yes, you do. And we have a vapor barrier on the inside, and therefore you have two vapor barriers, and that's not appropriate. So uh, <laughs> we, design, we, we step back and design it this way. It's more traditional, and it doesn't have the issue of two vapor barriers. Uh, the section of the overhead door, this is where you have that little bit of an arch over the overhead door. There's a little bit of a cantilever trim there. Uh, another wall section. Uh, this happens to be through the, through the uh, E. That happens to be through the um, this is over the front porch. I guess all three of these are, are near the front porch, just showing the details involved. A little bit more detailing around the front porch because a lot of people come up there and see that. I'm going to make a misimpression of the column uh, built up along this there. Uh, this is the uh, cupola. Uh, there is a way to get in there. So you go up to the mezzanine. Yeah. There is a, uh, get a step ladder to get up into the attic above the mezzanine. Okay, there's a, going to be a little scuttle. From there, you can walk, partly crawl, uh, to go through all the attic areas because you need to supervise and look at all of, all the uh, uh, sprinkler heads that are in the attic space. Mm -hmm. But from there, you can go up a ladder and you can get into this space from the interior. But so they will put some kind of catwalk planking in there, yeah, or uh, something yeah. above the insulation that's going to be blown in or whatever. Correct. We show no, yeah. the, the swimming in it like this. Part. And in the building section, so you can see it's right know. here. If the ladder's coming up here, there's walkway shown here. Okay. Uh, it's required by OSHA, basically, so we do it. So that cupola, 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 do we have windows on it? Yes, there's windows on it. All right, so we don't want any birds in there. Right, there's no movers, no screens. We have pigeon openings. openings. No pigeon <laughs> openings, please. Yeah, but the house we had a problem with the cupola in the North Hadley Hall. <coughs> oh, twice. twice. We have it again. Twice. We, and it's, it's again. So, so I just want to make sure that. The 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 really so it's just boys. Yeah. 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 Maybe three years. Okay. So door schedule, um, both, all the doors are basically three foot by seven foot commercial doors. Uh, you've got 14 by 14 overhead doors. This describes details, hardware. Are they insulated? Mm -hmm. the, the doors. Overhead doors are insulated. Yes, they have to be. They have to meet energy code, of course. Okay. Uh, different details for the standard doors. These are the, uh, we have some storefront doors at the entrances, at the front entrance and storefront. 
aluminum doors with lots of glass. Uh, there's a detail of the uh, overhead door, but that arch right. Uh, details for uh, tying in the sill and jams. Uh, window details, basically, very similar, just uh, basically commercial grade residential construction. The interior elevations, is, these are the bathrooms. We have a, a wing scope that goes around the uh, project. I can see missing a couple of the lower tiles there. Um, this is the middle stair coming up to the landing. This happens to be a section <coughs> stair. And this happens to be a section through the landing. And there's another section that shows the stair coming up to the landing. This is the dispatcher window. So on the dispatcher side, um, got a little bit larger county and we're writing counter on the Esco side, pass through a wind, solid window. This is your kitchen arrangement with uh, basically a, a base cabinet on the side of the stove. The stove is 36 inches, six inches larger than a, a standard residential stove. Uh, it's still six burners. Uh, and then you know, you've got sink bases and more cabinets. The microwave is basically attached to the under cabinet so you have more counter space. So the vent hood from that vents outside, not into the room? This vents out the south wall. Okay. Uh, reflective ceiling plan, showing the lighting, sprinkler heads, different devices, the air yeah. electric wheels for, for the apparatus. I basically have a note here. Let's see what I have. Uh, there's a note that's basically saying that all of the um, Everything on the overhead of the apparatus room is going to be verified before they install it with you to make sure you've got it just right. You know, you want the air wheel and the uh, lunch wheel yeah, right. coming behind the driver's door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to park the vehicle? Sure. Uh, I want to know that because we can adjust the lights. But once you put the lights in, you don't have as many places you want to be able to install that. So that's one area of coordination we're going to work out in the field. Uh, lighting. Uh, HVAC grills, uh, any, anything installed in the ceiling is shown here. Uh, camera locations are shown here, but also everything is also shown in the electrical trunks. This just happens to be one place we show off. IT and phones, you said, are we moved it to the general contractors. Does that include security cameras or is that different? The cameras were always on us. That was always on us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, foundation plan, uh, I'll go a little bit faster. Uh, obviously, reinforced concrete everywhere. Um, slope to drains where, where we need the drains, um, but foundation where you need it. The different details that we have for the foundation, uh, frost walls, uh, bearing walls, uh, apron for the, the trucks, interior haunch slabs for some interior bearing walls. And that's deeper obviously where it's backing on, correct? That's what we're looking at there? Is, is that the slab right yeah, there? Yeah, that's okay. Yep, yep. A little bit more stability. Yep. Uh, mezzanine framing, this is all framed with LDLs. Had to be for the span and for the weight that storage is. Yep. So underneath that, is that, is that that's going to be all finished? Yeah, so underneath this in the building section right, will be under the LDLs, we're going to put it a layer of sheetrock. Okay. Above the sheetrock, inside each of these spaces here, we're going to put three and a half inches of acoustical insulation just so that gotcha. you'll get some pounding, banging throw up there. Okay. Uh, under, and then that's in your ceiling cavity. About two and a half feet below that sheetrock, you do drop ceiling. ceiling. Okay. So that's the ceiling plan where the electrical wires and the HVAC ducts and everything are work in. Because that area is covered in sheetrock, it doesn't need sprinklers. Correct. So you only need the sprinklers to, uh, to build the ceiling. Uh, various details for the trusses and truss connections. Yeah. This is the roof framing plan with, with the trusses, we'll reinforcing around the cupola. To get that arch, we, we're basically creating a little uh, uh, outriggers to create that truss in both the elevations. Uh, additional truss information, I think there's some shear wall information here too. No, this, is the shear wall. this is the shear wall information, how they project the shear wall. Plywood, lots of nails. Um, General notes for the uh, uh, concrete wood. Uh, any, there's a little bit of structural steel. The columns that support the front porch are, are steel. Uh, these are diagrams of the, of the various trusses we have in this project. 
kind of simple. You don't, you don't see 20 trusses. You don't see mm -hmm. few so the trusses, those, so the, the contractor, when they get the bid, they go to a truss manufacturer. Yes. And, and that, gives them, that gives them the specs for mm -hmm. racing it and all that other stuff. Yeah. They'll, they'll basically come up with their own set of shop drawings. They will have their own engineer stamp them because their process, their engineer, mm -hmm. will take a look at them, make sure they're compliant, and then they will, uh, you know, right. construct the trusses, ship it. So this is a three-piece here, this is a three -piece. Is that a one or is that a two-piece? I'm assuming the, well, the way this is built, it looks like one. One. And yeah, you're yeah, showing cross, it's cross bracing. Four. Yeah, the cross bracing is by spec. That's for the spec. For the, for the, yeah, for fact, the main yeah, contract. Just, yeah. The contractor knows what he has to do for that. And then building code is the one that was here, did Yeah. Yeah. It, the cross yeah, bracing will be part, part yeah. of the yeah. shop drawing submittal. That's for yeah. sure. That one is here. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Okay. Uh, fire protection. It's all good. So we have, a, we have a wet and dry system, of course. Uh, dry above the, um, dry in the attic area. Um, basically comes into the back mechanical room here. We've got a little bit of a Christmas tree here. Uh, we have a uh, compressor underneath there for the, uh, the dry system. There's a floor drain in that room, so anything that breaks hits the floor uh, will drain out. Uh, the, to keep this system wet, we're running the uh, mezzanine protection at the bottom of the dry drywall. So, so you're saying every, everywhere that there's a drain, you've got a pitch? Yes. Okay. On the air, yeah, the compressor has an automatic drain on it? That's a detail. If it's required, then we do. Whatever you've seen in every other it's fire it's protection, uh, they call it the Christmas tree, but the fire protection. Right. 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 So this network you said is underneath the half inch sheetrock, which is screwed to the LVLs. No, 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 no this is in the mezzanine. Right. So up in the upper oh, mezzanine. Oh, this is we're talking the upper. Okay, the upper right. mezzanine, okay, I got you now. It's a surface mounted system, so we can keep it warm. Gotcha. Okay. Otherwise, we have to take up in the dry system. That yep. No, no. Okay. So uh, you'd be looking at those pipes would be exposed. Oh, you said about seat. the lower end, the bottom half yeah, of the in, mezzanine. In, in the bottom half of the mezzanine. So you got the LVLs half inch, and right. then there's like a two foot zone or something. Joe, it's, it's yeah. like or whatever it is. It's like what's above but, us, right? Yep. Now. Gotcha. Yep, yep, yep. And that and that is non combustible, so it doesn't yep. require sprinkler protection. <clears throat> and there are heads. There's a head in the top of the cupola. And there are uh, draft curtains for the types of head we're using. We have to make sure that the uh, warm air doesn't get around it and not trigger the head. So we have well, draft curtains in the attic. In the attic, up in the truss bases, from the bottom of the truss, yeah. from the bottom of the roof sheathing down 32 inches, and then tight fitting around all the, the truss boards. Uh, plumbing, basically. Wherever we have a plumbing picture, we, we bring water. <laughs> yeah, and we so. drain it. We, uh, the, 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 main di the main domestic system because of here, hot water heater, a couple of boilers that are part of the, the hot, hot water system. Um, there is a uh, emergency high wash shower over in this area. We talked about that. We got away from that really big one. Got to the did, one. What did you put in for heating? Uh, it's for the heating of the entire building. Mm -hmm. It is a hydronic air system. So you have an air handling unit <coughs> with hot water coils and you temper the air that way. There's also a DX coil, which is electric cooling in, in, the, in the summertime. Yeah, there's, in the apparatus phase, you have a hydronic slab, so there's, we'll see, radiant heat. Uh, radiant radiant heat. Radiant. Okay. And radiant heat's only in here. Okay. Uh, the LP is coming over here. The, L, the propane is part of the uh, plumbing, plumbing scope. There's, there's the tank details with the power protection. Uh, waste, uh, basically floor drains coming out to an old water separator that will continue. There's the building sewer coming out. They will connect after the old water separator. That's part of the site drawings. Uh, description of the plumbing fixtures that have been used and the diagram of the hot water system. Domestic hot water. On the mechanical side, this is the air system. So this is the duct work. Uh, working off an air, uh, air handling unit up in the mezzanine. Uh, that will supply and exhaust air to the building. The grills are, there's a supply and exhaust air up here that, that coincides with our outside windows. Mm -hmm. 
And this is floor or hung? That is, let's get to the section. I think it might be floor. I don't recall. Good question. I'll, I'll look at that. Um, What's that, TJ? I just asked if that was a floor install in the mezzi or oh, a hung. I think it's floor. I think it, I so that's going to eat up some of that? Well, it's going to be the way well, it, you can't really walk under it. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just, yep. You're going to lose that area there. That needs yep. to be a mechanical room anyway. Yep. It's a lot of, yeah. That mezzanine's a mechanical room. Correct. One third of it is. Um, let's see. Diffusers, yep. runs. Uh, this is the uh, exhaust capture system that comes out and will exit the building that way. This is the NO2 system for any uh, nitrous oxide because you'll have detectors in here for that. So you did mention that earlier that if something triggers this, the yeah. doors will open up. Is that what you yeah. said? Mm -hmm. So can hear it somehow. Correct. So let's say something were to build up and trigger that and the truck leaves on a cold night. Mm -hmm. What? It does just, it automatically shut the door? Yeah, it Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That costs a lot of money. If you don't mind, I'm not wearing my It's on tape. I'll come over. I'm most proud. Very good. HVAC details. Uh, I don't see detail on, on them hanging there, so I think it's a floor model. Okay. That's why I was just asking. Okay. Thank you. Hot water flow. This is this is the heating hot water diagram for the boilers, uh, expansion tank, and, and to several baseboard units. Kind of say different mechanical systems. Uh, this has to be the hydronic system. Uh, I have a question. Is there an the uh, overflow pan underneath that unit on the floor for if condensate drips? Yes. Run uh, out? Well, actually, the condensate is hard piped. Right. Uh, so there's it. a catch pan under it in case the unit condensates. Oh, it's, it's hard piped. So. There, there is a pan, and then a, and, a, and a pipe from that pan goes to the janitor sink. Right. Utility sink in the apparatus area. So that unit sits in that pan. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I also called for the duct work that goes to the louvers, because we've seen this before it works. You, you can bring in light, fluffy snow, with right. the, and it comes and melts in your duct work and right. it drips. drips. So we, we call for our ducts to drip to, to the exterior louver and drain out that way. Do we call that something? Yeah, we've had it here when it sucks it's cold good. air in, yeah. you know, like in the Late spring, like it'll condensate and drip right out of the window. Like uh, this is the schedules HVAC units, fans. Uh, there's a split system up in the uh, IT room so that that can be 24 7, you know, 365 cooling if you need it. Uh, so, all that's in here different registers, diffusers that go into the ceiling. I show you the truck work. Uh, we're going, to, we're going to have, going out to the exterior condensing unit, we'll have several uh, condensate pipes and supply and return refrigeration pipes going out to it. And to protect it from snow, we're going to build a little doghouse over it. Uh, on the electrical side, this is an electrical site plan, basically just picking up the outside lighting. Uh, and, and we do have some pole lighting here. Yes, sir. And the electric control room, uh, the electrons are going to be coming out to the um, yeah. heat detectors or smoke detectors. Um, probably heat detectors. We, 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 we can go back to the sensors on the outside. Uh, but the electric room's up front. Um, so all LED throughout? All, as far as I know, all LED. Yeah, I wanted, there was one thing that wasn't LED. And it may have changed it. I asked them to change it, but no, I think it was like a like a chemical light or something. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sensors, the sensors on the outside. Yeah, they got the, the light control system now. Mass code is a bear with light <coughs> trying to save money. So they flipped upon you uh, this this low voltage <coughs> system, which will have switches over there, which will have daylight sensors. So. It won't allow you to turn on the light if there's a, if it senses enough. There's reasonable amount of light coming into the window. So rooms rooms with uh, proximity to glass, you have daylight sensors. You've got occupancy sensors, of course, because they want the lights to go off and nobody's in there. So you have all these systems of digitals. You have these digital light control systems. The outside lights, similarly, I believe, are photo cell on, time clock off. Right. Uh, if you want to. Uh, 
we talked about having some additional lights if you wanted to. I don't see them on here right now. That would be uh, sensor only, like, but they'd go off every time a raccoon or a coyote came by. Yeah, I don't think you said no. No, I didn't. Or Neighbors probably wouldn't. Okay, yeah. No, 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 no. Um, Five pole lights. Uh, we have uh, four conduit going out to the pole. Power, power spare, and two communications. Probably one communications, maybe a communications mm -hmm. pair. That's what we last decided. Well, how do we get cable in there? Cable. Yeah, cable, cable activity and stuff like that. Well, well you can use cable communication. Yeah. Well, not the cable, not like TV cable, but data. Oh. Yeah, yeah fiber or something it, like that. Yeah, yeah fiber. Well, you have like communications for the cell. Yeah, kind of the cable TV. Yeah. So if you want to get into who's Comcast or Charter up here? Charter. Charter. So right now, uh, you can contract with them and, and pull a wire into. Uh, they would come through here and up to this room, and your DMARC would be up here. You have a little backboard here for cable TV, mm -hmm. telephone, maybe data, or, or a rack with data. Because you're going to have access control and uh, cameras. So you're going to have a right. couple yeah, of rack right. um, So electrical, this is the lighting plan, so I'm switching. You, uh, you can see where there's occupancy sensors. These are daylight sensors. So I tried, because I know you'd like to keep it simple. I'd like to keep it simple. I asked and got rebuffed. This is what you have to do. So you know, I did try. Um, electrical power, I think you've seen this several times. We asked you to look at this, make sure the uh, power was in the, you had enough power located where you wanted it. These are all too much for something else. Excuse me? Any elements in the boat range? Yeah, well, plenty. He actually, because he's a residential, mm -hmm. the code requires that in grade four. <laughs> I thought that was kind of crazy, but they told me that was code. It is crazy. Yes. Uh, you got a couple TV locations, a couple wall mounted TVs uh, going in there. I think that was a wall mounted TV up high, right? You yeah, have one up high. Yeah. Uh, we have um, receptacles above the lockers. Oh, so you yeah. can recharge up <coughs> right there. So yeah. we do in the TVs through technology. The TVs, actual wall mounted TVs, but carrying TVs and so on. Oh uh, no, we only have the uh, 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 boxes. No, we have the boxes. We have the, um, and I think I asked this question. Uh, the ask mounts, the, oh, yeah. the TV mounts. Sometimes we provide them. More times you want to get yeah. them when you buy the TV, which is what we're going to do. But we got to own the blocking in the wall. Yeah, we do own the blocking. Right. Um, Electric room, uh, uh, controls, open, close, stop, basically. Um, they are, I believe they're sensors, so we don't need to have the continuous, you have, don't need to hold, no, actually not, got rid of the sensors. So these are hold down. So when you want to close the door, that's the wrong thing to do. When you close the door, you have to hold it down continuously. It should go on its own. It yeah, should I'm be thinking, a sensor if somebody were to break the... This is more of a safety thing. Well, I'm trying to keep... Because sensors are the, are the weak link in all of this. So I'm trying to keep the sensors to a minimum because they're the ones that fail first. But if you're exiting the... If you're exiting in a, in a call, nobody's going to be standing there holding the, the button. Right. Holding the button now. So I, so I can't have that. So i got to double check. Make sure I don't have that. So what do you want? No, you've got to have the sensors. Right, you've got the and sensors. And so yeah. Yeah. if you, if you push the button momentarily, it will close unless it unless hits something. Unless somebody basically. breaks the game. Right. So. so that they could get close from dispatch to this station. So you inch the truck close to the door and the door opens? No. 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 Have but like, let's say you pull the truck out and yeah. you're a turnout here going to a call, you quickly jump out hit the button to close it if that were to be the case yeah. and we're in the truck and we're gone and the door is still shutting you know what I mean? yeah. like, so it's but you also have RF transmitters okay. in the truck too so you, you don't have to get out of the truck so well, we don't have the did the well no we don't have openers up to the door well we do but the door we don't have oh no no we don't have the RF to open the door and the door wouldn't open yet or you open it when you walk by. Now, it, when it goes off for those sensors, does it open all the way or does it open just enough to bring in air? The only answer to that is 
Were they on up the... Oh, oh, light the light open yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah, I thought you were talking about the... No, no, the no, 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 yeah. no, for the nitrous. Yep. Didn't even scratch your clue on the pump. I think they're the junk vendors operating that day. I'll get them next week. Okay. Hill is burning. Got to move. Uh, and everything that has power, the fans have power. Uh, the compressor is located over here now, and we have a uh, three-phase uh, disconnect over there. Uh, compressor, uh, power up here, air handling unit power, and this is the, the primaries. It comes in with the meter, main disconnect, uh, the automatic transfer panel for the generator, and then uh, power with two power, two power. Where do you have all the where do you have the switches for the bay for light lighting or is it on sensor? Uh, right now so I would say oh, I think there's like the, the fan and stuff, where does that get turned on? Is that I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it's on this wall okay. right here. Cool. You, you, okay. Okay. Uh, you do have Probably a sensor uh, sensors like coming in okay. off the doors. Cool. Back here, yep. Yeah. I think there's night lights. So when you come in you'd never be walking the pitch dark anyway. Um, and we've been in the back so long, so. <laughs> so this is the fire alarm plan, and I don't know if you look at the symbols, but that was a uh, smoke in the uh, next room. And we have smokes uh, required for the, in the residential area here, too. Carbon monoxide as well there? Yes. Um, yep, we have carbon monoxide uh, okay. over here. We should have, uh, I'm not sure what the NO system shows, it probably in the mechanical as the, uh, yep. Uh, the carbon monoxide up here, but the NO2 is probably part of the chemical system. So we do have COs in the in the bay yeah. as well. Yeah. Is that, re is that required? I would say so. Okay. Maybe not. I would say we'd have to check the listing because I have a feeling that we won't be able to have them in there. They need to be out of the hazmat, right? False alarms. Right. So the the trucks inherently will always <laughs> create a little bit of sound. Right. But okay. we'll try, I'll check the code. Uh, this is uh, telephone and data. So everywhere you see one of these triangles, it's like two colors. Uh, that's a telephone data outlet. So uh, when we were talking about we were doing the telephone system and the town was going to do the data system, it came to the point where, okay, I'm specking a telephone system, I'm specking a telephone jack. I'm expecting a telephone jack faceplate, but I'm not expecting the data jack that's going into that faceplate. So it's better to do both at the same time. Correct. Yeah. yeah. These are the critical <coughs> locations. These are the card reader locations. Uh, see our, we also have a video, like the, the, the a video phone, phone, uh, a phone. Door, doorbell system, a phone. What is in the back door right there? If the car, card reader fails or somebody doesn't have one. Is there a fail safe? Is there a key? There's, is there a, there's a hard key. A hard key. Which you may, depending we're upon how you key the system, you may or may not get that out. We're talking about putting like one of those residential key boxes there you could open it. Perfect. I'm just thinking. That's good. No, obviously, you don't want to have to re-key the door because you lost the key. The hard key. Correct. Yep. Yep. Hmm, and this is That's the light, lighting fixtures schedule and the electrical panel schedule, electrical uh, legend, and uh, online diagram for the well, main system again. There's no, uh, we don't have a PA system inside of the system. Well, they all talk pretty loud. <laughs> you, you do. Not that they do. Full pages of time. Yeah, it is. We can hear Joe. Can hear what? John, the Bruins are on, John. Okay, on page one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're not going through that. Okay. 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 The, the spec is divided into divisions, and division zero is for contracts. Division one is for general conditions, like. Temporary facilities, doing some middles. Division two is gone now. Division <coughs> three is concrete, so anything that's concrete is in division three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So electrical is division 26. Uh, so they're all broken out into a, uh, a master uh, 
outline, uh, master spec outline. So if you need to find anything, the index kind of shows you where all that is located. If you're looking for anything in particular, the index will give you the section numbers and overhead resources. Who has and this book? Right there. That's it. Yeah, so this is Mike's set. Oh, your and set. So Our set. Our set. And what we'll do is, once we have conformed sets, so there's an addendum process, and the design team will update the, these drawings and specs with all the addendum changes. Once we're out of bid, the conformed sets, you'll get one, Tim Nyhart will get a wet. Just like you did on the Just like we did. And then the uh, Chris Oak will get yeah. his. Yeah. Can I just ask you one question on the commissioning services? Mm -hmm. Do you guys verify <coughs> the concrete pour when you do radiant so while it's happening? So what we'll do... I understand you can pressure. So what we'll do, and this will be at the next building committee, is so by code you need to have a third party material testing contract or vendor. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to solicit by pricing for material testing companies. They're going to do soil compaction testing before your know, concrete pours so for foundation and one on slabs. They're going to do concrete testing. Um, they're going to, you know, do the asphalt thickness. No, that. But I was actually talking about the radiant coil system yep. in that slab when the when the pour is actually happening. I'm just asking. The I, I tested, but you're looking for near. Oh, so he's asking. Yeah, and I understand you can have a gauge yeah, on it, but I, yeah. I've actually witnessed a shitty pour one time, a puncture, and a real half-ass patch, yeah. and the concrete go over. And it's still held. I get it. I'm talking about longevity. Yeah, of, yeah. You know, since yeah, whatever the appropriate way to test it is, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. So okay. if it makes most sense to do it before the concrete's, you know, covered over it, and yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Right. So, so, so as far as reviewing this, do you need it by Friday? Um, if we see anything that's yeah, crazy or yeah. something, or do well, you, yeah. you, you so, want a conditional I mean, approval? Well, if, if you're satisfied that this meets your requirements, then to the 99.9 percentile. Uh, you can certainly give us stuff and we'll certainly add it. But we, we really can't go out to bed unless you say that you've got an appropriate set of documents, you've got a reasonable set of documents here. So you need to vote an approval on this since you're all here together. On today or today? Yeah. Not tomorrow. Okay. okay. So can we so does so can we say a conditional approval or do we need a full well, How do you just, want to do it? the approval would be for us to move into the bid phase and, and while we're in bid there are going to be addendums okay, issued. Right. Okay. Right. So a hundred percent if if some of those addendums are related to stuff you see, to Nihard sees, whatever, right. you know, that's what it'll be. So these are hundred percent? These are hundred percent seeds. Yeah, yeah, these are what we call bid documents. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the bid documents as presented tonight. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Second with Joe? Yeah. Yeah, Dookie can't second. Oh, Joe. Did you second? Second, yes. So our next committee meeting is June eleventh. Again, the idea is that's right after the G C bid and, and that's the the meeting where we vote to move forward with the G C. And there will be the next to approve. Yeah. I'll send you a recommendation you letter and okay. Okay. yeah. All right. So June 11th. Yep. 530. Yeah. So how much I keep telling people to get out of the way as I'm coming over the bridge. I'm going to have to start getting a press escort from. That's it. Do you have anything else? Motion to adjourn. Make a motion. I motion to adjourn. Okay, somebody second it because I can't. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The meeting is called to an end at 7 or 7 p.m.